give some time to my my colleague here. Professor. Thank you, thank you so much, Fiona, and thank you so much, girls, for your fruitful and important insights. Please give them a big round of applause. Thank you. Now, I'd like to introduce our second partnership with Circle Women. Through this partnership, some of some of the most marginalized girls from the South Punjab have gotten the opportunity to acquire productive skills in digital WordPress um, um, coding and the entrepreneurship. For this, I would request Rehan to please uh, lead and share with us how this partnership has benefited these girls, please. Thank you so much, Zen. Uh, first of all, I would like to quickly go through the introduction of the organization in terms of we are working on basically providing digital skills to uh, females, mostly uh, mentor mentorship and readiness uh, related to work. Uh, Circle believes uh, in supporting the next generation workforce by empowering women and engaging with the youth. Uh, I will quickly come to the program. And under this program, we covered 206 hours of technical training, uh, 12 hours of life skills, and more than 12.5 hours of freelancing sessions with these uh, female beneficiaries from uh, Bhavalpur. Other than that, uh, the course, uh, the cohort was of 50 uh, uh, class size. And uh, in this program, we uh, almost uh, screened uh, uh, out of 140 participants, we uh, screened and uh, moved on with 100 participants in the course of eight months in total. I will quickly go through the stats and then I will request the uh, participants to tell more about the program. Uh, the program covered mainly uh, in terms of developing good knowledge of domain and WordPress from having zero knowledge to being capable of developing websites on one WordPress. Uh, they uh, also uh, secured a project uh, worth uh, 18,000 rupees at, at the end after completing the technical uh, skill. Uh, other than that, in this program, more than 80% uh, students are now digitally literate and uh, are able to uh, leverage the power of internet uh, for themselves and their families. Other than that, more than 96% of the students uh, started uh, using uh, by creation of basic Gmail accounts. Uh, they are now using Facebook for a business. Uh, they are using WhatsApp for business. Uh, there were more than uh, 15 participants who already had their businesses who were working from uh, like they were having home-based uh, products. So they, they expanded the market, not just only from Bahawalpur, they moved to other markets as well. And we are trying our best to give more, more, more and more opportunities to these uh, st uh, students. Uh, other than that, now I would like to request uh, the participants to please, uh, we have Saba, Minahil and Kosar with us today. I would like to request them to tell your name and tell your experience in this program. Ke andar. Please, over to you. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum all of you. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, My name is Sabah hai, and I am a BS Economics ki student. So, it was a very good experience. I am from Bhavalpur se hun, basically. So, it was a very good experience in this course. First of all, thank you. ITA and Circle and Adara Tulimo Agahi, who this project is going to be able to do it and we can do something and earn something. And in this course, I was here and I didn't know anything about it. I didn't know anything about what digital skills are. So when I came here, और मैंने डिजिटल स्किल्स के बारे में पढ़ा सीखा तो मुझे बहुत जो है नॉलेज इंक्रीज हुआ और मैंने बहुत कुछ सीखा थैंक यू सो मच नाउ मिना आप प्लीज बताइएगा क्विकली प्लीज बिकॉज़ वी आर शॉर्ट ऑफ टाइम अस्सलाम वालेकुम मेरा नाम मिनाहिल इरफान है और मैं मुल्तान से हूं मुझे एक्सपीरियंस बताती हूं कि मुझे आज से पहले इस कोर्स से पहले मुझे बिल्कुल भी पता नहीं था कि हम इंटरनेट का यूज अर्निंग के लिए भी कर सकते हैं ये पता था कि हाँ वीडियोस देख ली हैं और इधर उधर की बातें लेकिन मुझे ये नहीं पता था कि इंटरनेट जो है हम अर्निंग के लिए भी यूज कर सकते हैं फिर इदारा तहलीम व आगाही की तरफ से आ, सर्कल के अंडर हमने एक कोर्स किया उसमें ऑनलाइन अर्निंग के बारे में बताया वर्डप्रेस में कि आप किस तरह से अपनी एक वेबसाइट बना सकते हैं और अपनी वेबसाइट को अट्रैक्टिव कर सकते हैं किस तरह उसे डेवलप कर सकते हैं उससे किस तरह अर्न कर सकते हैं क्योंकि वो कोर्स 12 डेज का था तो लेकिन एक्सपीरियंस काफी अच्छा रहा इससे मेरे अंदर और शौक डिवेलप हुआ कि मैं आगे भी सीखूं السلام علیکم میرا نام کوثر ریاض ہے میں بھاولپور سے ہوں میں نے بی اے کیا ہوا ہے اور میں سب سے پہلے ادارہ تعلیم و آگاہی کا شکریہ ادا کروں گی اور سرکل کا شکریہ ادا کروں گی کہ انہوں نے اس پروجیکٹ کے تھرو ہمیں ویب ڈیولپمنٹ کے بارے میں سکھایا اور اس کے علاوہ میں اپنی میم سنا کا 
बहुत बहुत शुक्र अदा करूंगी कि उन्होंने हमें बहुत अच्छे से सिखाया इस सब के बारे में उसके अलावा जो है हमने डिजिटल स्किल्स और टेक्निकल स्किल्स सीखी डिजिटल स्किल्स के अलावा हमने लाइफ स्किल्स सीखी लाइफ स्किल्स में हमने कम्युनिकेशन स्किल्स उसमें बात करने का तरीका और उसके अलावा जो था हमें कस्टमर को कैसे हम उसके साथ किस तरह डील करेंगे परचेज हमने उनसे करना है अगर उसको हमने बाय करना है तो किस तरह के तरीके से करेंगे उनके साथ बात किस तरीके से करेंगे इस सब के बारे में सीखा और हमें सबसे ज़्यादा कम्युनिकेशन का होता है कि हमने अगर किसी ऑफिस में हम काम करने के लिए जाते हैं तो वहाँ पे अगर किसी बॉस से हमने बात करनी है तो किस तरह करेंगे और अगर आपका वहाँ पे आप आपकी जॉब हो गई है तो आप वहाँ पे एज अ काम कर रहे हैं तो अगर आपका आपके बॉस को गुस्सा आ जाता है किसी बात पर तो आप किस तरह से हैंडल करेंगे इस इस सब के बारे में मैंने बहुत ठीक है नाउ आई वुड लाइक टू आस्क टू क्वेश्चन बेसिकली मैं उसको मर्ज कर रहा हूँ द क्वेश्चन इज बेसिकली के इस प्रोग्राम की वजह से आपने अपने अंदर क्या तब्दीली देखी और इस प्रोग्राम का जो मेन कंपोनेंट था दैट वाज के ये इकोनॉमिक एम्पावरमेंट हो ये अपने अपने अर्निंग्स कर सके थ्रू फ्री लांसिंग तो थोड़ा सा उसके बारे में बताइएगा तो दो, आप प्लीज दोनों चीजों का आंसर कीजिएगा कि क्या तब्दीली देखी और आपने क्या प्रोजेक्ट्स विन किए या कितनी आ, कितना कमाया आपने इस प्रोग्राम को सीखने के बाद तब्दीली तो ये कि जब इस कोर्स में इस कोर्स में आने से पहले ना तो कॉन्फिडेंट नहीं था इतना कि किस तरह कन्वर्जेशन करनी है तो जब इस कोर्स में मैं, आ, मैंने एडमिशन लिया ना तो सबसे पहले तो कॉन्फिडेंट आया और तब्दीली ये कि अर्निंग जो थी ना अर्निंग मुझे नहीं पता था कि किस तरह करते हैं क्या है कि क्या है ये तो जब मैंने अर्निंग स्टार्ट की ना तो तब्दीली ये आई कि मैं इंडिपेंडेंट हूँ ठीक है मुझे अब हजार दो हजार के लिए इंडिपेंडेंट नहीं होना पड़ता किसी पे कि हाँ मेरे पास नहीं है तो मैं किसी से मांगू तो अब अपना एक्सपेंस मैं खुद देख सकती हूँ तो सबसे बड़ी तब्दीली तो ये आई दूसरा ये कि अब जो मेरी कुछ कजन या कुछ फ्रेंड है जो नेबर है जो नहीं करती थी तो उनको भी मैंने रिकमेंड किया कि आप यहाँ पे एडमिशन लें तो इस ये सब जो है ना ये तब्दीली बहुत हुई है और आपने क्या चीज यानी कोई ब्लॉग के प्रोजेक्ट्स और जो बाकी वेबसाइट रिलेटेड प्रोजेक्ट्स हैं उसके बारे में प्लीज क्विकली एंड देन वी मूव टू द नेक्स्ट ओके और जब मैंने वेब डेवलपमेंट में सी, आ, काम सीखा तो मैं, आ, हमारी मैम मैडम सना मैं उनका भी शुक्रिया अदा करना चाहूंगी कि उन्होंने हमें बहुत बहुत हेल्प की और बहुत गाइड किया तो एक प्रोजेक्ट उन्होंने ही हमें लेकर दिया था ब्लॉगिंग मैंने स्टार्ट की थी और मैंने टेन थाउजेंड वहां से अर्न किया है कुछ एडोब इलिस्ट्रेटर पे मैंने जो कुछ डिजाइन क्रिएट किए थे वहां से मैंने कुछ लोगों के साथ मेरी डील हुई थी लेकिन मैं उन, उस काम को इम्प्रूव करने की कोशिश करूंगी थैंक यू प्लीज आप बताइएगा Uh, सबसे पहले जो मेरे अंदर चेंज आया वो ये है कि मेरा वे ऑफ कन्वर्सेशन बिल्कुल चेंज हो गया मतलब पहले मुझे नहीं पता था कि क्या बात बात पता था कि क्या करनी है लेकिन ये नहीं था पता कि कहाँ करनी है किस तरह से करनी है किस बंदे के सामने क्या बात करनी है तो वो थोड़ा चेंज आया मुझ में और इसके अलावा मुझे पहले बिल्कुल भी ये नहीं पता था कि इंटरनेट जो है बहुत हार्मफुल भी है हमारे लिए लेकिन जैसे मैंने डिजिटल स्किल सीखी इसके लिए मैम सोनिया का शुक्रिया अदा करना चाहूंगी जिन्होंने हमें इसके ऊपर पूरी ट्रेनिंग दी और उन्होंने हमें बताया कि आपका जो इंटरनेट है जब आप उसे यूज कर रहे होते हैं तो आप किस तरह से अपनी आईडी को उस पर सिक्योर कर सकती हैं और सर नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन हाँ न, मैंने अर्निंग तो नहीं की क्योंकि मैं अभी सीख रही हूँ फ्री जो है अभी मैं साथ साथ स्टडी भी कर रही हूँ फर्स्ट ईयर प्री मेडिकल और साथ साथ मैं सीख रही हूँ वर्ड प्रेस क्योंकि वो ट्वेल्व डेज का कोर्स है लेकिन मैं उसको थोड़ा और ज्यादा सीख रही हूँ क्योंकि मेरे अंदर एक शौक डेवलप हुआ तो मैं उसे थोड़ा और सीख रही हूँ ताकि मैं अर्न करूंगी इन एक दिन जरूर अर्न करूंगी थैंक यू सो मच एंड लास्ट कॉस्ट प्लीज आप ये कहना चाहूंगी कि हमारे अंदर सबसे ज्यादा जो था कॉन्फिडेंस था क्योंकि हम बात नहीं कर सकते थे किसी से अगर हमारे सेशन भी होते थे तो हम चुप करके बैठे रहते थे तो जो हमें फिर लांसिंग के जो सेशन दिए गए उनके अंदर हमें मोटिवेशनल लेक्चर दिए गए तो उनके थ्रू जो है हमारे अंदर कॉन्फिडेंस आया हम फेस टू फेस बात कर सकते थे और उसके so well thank you rehan this was an interesting discussion now it's time to close this session you all have been a very great audience i hope today's session was a lesson to all us finally i want to leave us with an encouraging note with a meaningful partnership and a great ambition the crucial the, the crucial cause of girls education can be and will be empowered thank you all for being with us thank you
Now I would request uh, Ma'am Bela Raza Jamil, CEO Adara Telimo Agahi, to please lead the third session. Ma'am, please. today this is the story that we have to tell to pakistan ke these are the girls and beta aap log idhar hi rehna yahan se abhi log idhar aa jayenge and then aap yahan pe baithna because we want and center so that we can then show that what can happen or kal i hope they will lead the girls education uh, and enterprise alliance jia तो इन्हीं के लिए जिया और इसीलिए हमने सोचा कि क्यों ना हम एक अलायंस की कॉल करें उन लोगों के सामने जहां पे हम हम अपने पार्लियामेंटेरियंस को अपने गवर्नमेंट के लोगों को इंडस्ट्री के लोगों को मीडिया के लोगों को सिविल सोसाइटी को सब दिखा सकते हैं कि और डेवलपमेंट पार्टनर्स को Okay, what is entirely possible if girls from these districts, the thirteen most deprived districts of Punjab, from Multan and Bhabalpur, can do this? And by the way, we have Muzaffargarh and Rahim Yar Khan as well. Then anyone can do it. And why are we not doing it? So with that, I begin our um, next very important. Or please, apne pledges ke liye tayar ho jaen. and i am just so fortunate and all of us from the girls education and enterprise alliance ke we have with us the people that we do or uh, dr sania nishtar may i as i just call you first and if you can just take uh, the seat here so dr sania nishtar special assistant to the minister prime minister of pakistan on poverty alleviation and social protection a big round of applause for what she's been able to do what a champion <laughs> thank you and i just want to remind you we were together with some of the same actors on the 13th of march 19 uh, 2020 before covid struck please ma'am have a seat um we are also extremely fortunate today as i said similar actors who were there we have uh, dr christian turner who is just a dream high commissioner matlab urdu to seekh hi rahe hain क्रिकेट का भी शौक है सफाई का भी शौक है क्लाइमेट चेंज का भी शौक है किस चीज का नहीं शौक है और गर्ल्स एजुकेशन का तो बहुत शौक होना चाहिए बिकॉज पाकिस्तान हुकूमत के साथ मिलके इफ यू कैन जस्ट इवन जस्ट एंड वील ऑलवेज फील द चेयर किस चीज का नहीं शौक है बट टू सी द विजन ऑफ थिंग्स चेंजिंग ओवर हेयर सो थैंक यू सो मच फॉर बींगर आई हैव विद मिस आयडा गर्मा मिलाखू she is the represent country representative for unicef pakistan big round of applause for aida because she's everywhere throughout this covid period this unusual period aida has been please have a seat aida right here and it's just been phenomenal to see aida go i mean there's been vaccine diplomacy vaccine humanitarianism you name it but most of all saving lives but more than then than that is developing lives making them empowered i i am more power to you thank you for being with us we have with us also um uh, musharraf zaidi from tabad lab who's been crying out loud data but data and rankings and now with tabad lab just about everything that stirs because there is Uh, challenges of humanity and rights and entitlement and it's great to see musharraf and recently they launched a great report on digital um, empowerment and industry and the art of the possible musharraf it's not just we are having you here for nothing we have great expectations of great pledges to see how we can take things forward we then have uh, with us ms nazia seher from jaica and nazia has uh, is the senior program manager at jaica she's been working on safe schools but gender empowerment education uh, enterprise and jaica is a great a supporter for pakistan and it's wonderful to see 
JICA in the forefront with us. Mr. Fahad Hussain, uh, a great partner, and he's been a partner since we started doing the ASA reports, sharing what data can do. And he's been our ASA ambassador also, but from the media, um, showing the art of the possible and being hard hitting to sh because of all one reason ke sab hum hubbul watan hai hum chahte hain ke 100 saal mein jab pakistan apni 100 saal ki barsi apni wo banaye salgira manaye to wo ek aisi salgira ho ke jahan pe hame hum sar fakhr se utha sake aur ke every girl is in school and finishing the 12 years of education and i will say thank god for malala to have led that entire initiative we have with us also shanawaz uh, Saab, uh, Shana, Sayyid Shanawaz Ali from Oxfam. These are our partners. Uh, Javed hasn't joined us from Malala Fund, but when he comes, he can just be there and I'll be calling on people. Uh, Shanawaz, are you here? Alina Bibi from UNESCO, Program Officer in Education. As you know, UNESCO leads is the guardian for SDG 4. And today we are pledging for SDG 400 years of Pakistan. And can someone be here to help with one another chair here, please? And we have from the Ministry of Education, sadly, everybody, there were things happening, but Ekiko Hanaya, who's the Education Policy Advisor, can I have someone to help us from the uh, organizers, a uh, chair, which can come right here? Akiko? Akiko Hanaya. She's currently the uh, from uh, JICA, but she's working as an advisor to the Ministry of Education um, on the on education. And this is the Ministry of Federal Education and Professional Development. Great to have you, Akiko. So we have here amongst us, you've heard the story, you've seen the metrics. The data says cannot have 25% girls only in economic uh, in, in employment. This is government's own data. Cannot have 44% girls at post-primary education, not in schools. Cannot have girls completely lying on the bottom of the pile when it comes to digital empowerment. We have to see Pakistan go from strength to strength. And the only way all of this is going to happen is when we as a partnership, and I can just share with you, that Facebook Lightstone publishers, Amina Sayyid is here and we'll be calling upon her. So the pledges will go on. So be ready with your pledges. I'm here like in the auction. This is a big pledging. Okay. And do you have a chair for Sayyid Chanavas? Where? Okay. So I will move. I can move from here. I don't even need much. But Sayyid Chanavas, you were outside. Please, can you join us? From Oxfam. We have uh, our, some of our uh, eminent panelists who've been here actually dead on time uh, have to leave for other meetings. And I will have to call upon um, the, uh, His Excellency, the High Commissioner, Christian Turner, the great friend of Pakistan, as I said, when it comes to girls' education, to climate change, to vaccines, to saving lives, to, uh, to a digital transformation of girls and creating great partnerships between UK and Pakistan for what is going to be truly transformative. And what will be truly transformative for Pakistan is uh, something like GIA, because this is an alliance where everyone has to join hands. And it is not about ITA. Please let me say that. It is not about ITA. It is about an alliance for girls education and enterprise and that means everyone who's here including the national education foundation uh, afsha homa uh, afsha uh, they seen from the chairperson on ncrc you people are all a critical part of it everyone over here and i think if anyone has been leading this great ambassadorship role for pakistan and for uk has been christian and i invite christian to share with us the thoughts how do we go forward and to acknowledge that fcdo has been at the forefront of us reaching this milestone sadly annabelle is not here but you can share with annabelle that if we had not started Siani Sehelia with her, 
we would not have reached here. If we had not started Uran with Oxfam, we would not have been here. For Malala Fund, Asman Se Baate, talking to the skies, wise friends, and Uran is flight. These names and these vis this vision has to merge in one and working towards that one target all together with all the resources. And thank you for all of you for being here. Christian, over to you. Yes, please. Wow. Khawatino Hazrat, Salam Alaikum. Jesaka Abjante hai me tori tori ardu bol sakta hu, lekin many ardu bohot kharab hai. So, mujhe afsos hai. I will continue in English. Please, uh, please forgive me. Um, I, what an impressive panel, but can I just say this panel is not the most important one. I think the panel we just heard with those young girls, those young change leaders are the ones who are really, really important because today is all about voice and empowerment and giving those girls voice. So I think we need one more round of applause, please, as they come back in for these girls. Okay, these are the ones we need to hear as our champions, not people like, like me talking. Um, I've got three messages really, and I think they are quite uh, familiar ones. Uh, the first is that girls' education matters. And uh, you have just been flattering about my work on cricket, on climate change, a little bit of business on Afghanistan. There's a lot of work going on, but the reason we must make time for these issues of girls' education is really, it's about the most important thing we all do. Um, uh, in all the studies of development and all the questions about what helps a country grow and prosper and be successful and stable, there is one statistic which has the strongest correlation, and that is girls in full-time education. It's very, very simple. When you look at Pakistan's growth and you compare it to other comparators, a famous story of Pakistan against, say, South Korea 30, 40 years ago, it's the girls' education which, uh, which drives it. We cannot develop unless we have not just half the population, but as the chairperson for the National Commission was reminding me, 51% of the population fully achieving uh, their potential. There can't be a sustainable path uh, to development without that. And there are some wonderful statistics I've got here that I will share with you. Uh, one additional year of schooling can increase a woman's earnings by 10 to 20%. A nice hashtag for those of you on social media. Girls learn, women earn. Very simple. Girls earn, girls learn, women earn. 10, 20% increase. A child whose mother can read is 50% more likely to live past the age of five, twice as likely to attend school themselves, and 50% more likely to be immunized. If women have the same role in labor markets as men, up to an estimated $28 trillion, that figure is too big to even think about, could be added to global GDP. So girls' education builds richer, healthier, fairer, and more stable societies. That's why we're here. That's the first message. Uh, it matters. The second message is that Pakistan is, I think, making progress for all of the reasons we've been talking about already and for all the change makers who are together uh, here today. Uh, three million children have been brought back to schools, uh, an education budget that is increasing. I should single out the work of my friend, Dr. Sanya Nishtar, who is just an extraordinary pioneer and leader in this country uh, to help lift opportunity uh, for all through the uh, ISAS program. Uh, in Punjab, uh, we're seeing school uh, student attendance increasing uh, up to uh, 95% in 2018, equivalent to more than 20,000 teachers attending each day, and an increase in students' attendance up to about 80% in, uh, in KP. So these sorts of figures, I think, give us hope and, and encouragement that the interventions we're making can achieve an effect. Yet we also know that there is still a lot more to do. The figure that scares me, that worries me, is 22 million children were out of school in Pakistan before COVID-19, of whom over 50% were, of course, girls. And that gives Pakistan the second highest number of out-of-school children in the world. And as Fiona was saying, the impact of COVID-19 presents a fresh challenge in many ways, but in particular because that allows those numbers to actually fall back with a survey in May of last year 
saying that in the COVID crisis, as many as 27% of families were considering not sending their children back to school. So there is a lot more to do for all of us in the room here today. So if we know girls' education matters, if we know we're making progress, there is more to do. The third thing I'm here to recommit to and to pledge is that the UK will help on this journey. Um, that is... That is not just uh, FCDO and the work of our development colleagues in, in what we used to call DFID, now part of FCDO, and my close colleague, uh, Annabelle, and all of her team. It's the British Council, who you've been hearing is, is part of this uh, effort as well. But more broadly, the UK is positioning itself as a, as a global leader on gender equality. We have a record of putting women and girls' rights at the center of our international policy and uh, a particular campaign uh, to ensure that girls have access to 12 years of quality education in support of global targets. We know that empowering women and girls gives us the best return for our, for our investment. So we have quite ambitious global targets of getting 40 million more girls in school, 20 million more girls uh, of a reading age uh, of 10 in low and middle income countries by 2026. And we've put education at the heart of our G7 presidency and want to stand up for every girl's right to 12 years of quality education. So with that, uh, I think mine is simply to say, uh, support for this message of voice and empowerment. We won't apologize for putting girls' education at the heart of our conversation on development and diplomacy, a conversation which is about a partnership. And I think that is the point of the GE Girls Education and Enterprise, Enterprise Alliance that we're celebrating today. It's about, it's about partnership. It's about working together. So many congratulations on today's launch. Pakistan Kamyabi ki Kelly Larke on ki Teli Mehemhe or Apka Kam for Hotehemhe. Thank you very much. That was awesome. Um, collaboration, partnerships, girls' education. These are what will transform. And also, please, not to forget, all of us who are here, what's happening in Afghanistan. And, you know, every day, every minute counts when girls are not in school, when they should be in school. So in solidarity for all those girls uh, in Afghanistan, but also in Pakistan, and we continue to pledge for girls' education. I'd like to have... Um, uh, Sayyid Chanavaz Ali, I know there are people who are leaving, but uh, uh, Christian, are you going to be leaving at 12? Okay. So, um, Sayyid Chanavaz Ali, who's country head for Oxfam, which where we started a journey five years pehle, and we, we started with the world, women in leadership, and these were girls still at primary and middle, and those cohorts of girls of 70 have now reached where we did. And we had one of them who's doing FSC uh, engineer, uh, science in medical, and now she is going to be moving, and she's also doing coding and doing online enterprise, just to show that when you collaborate with education and enterprise, girls are on another trajectory. And these are ordinary girls who've become extraordinary agents of change in Pakistan. So over to you, um, Shanavaz. Um, Thank you, you so much. Please. Assalamu alaikum. Uh, Rabbi Salih Muhammad Wali Muhammad. Uh, Rabbi Atkil Nimot Kyun, Wa Kharijni Mukhraja Sit Kyun, Wajali Miladun Ka Sultan and Nasira. I'm grateful uh, to the panel uh, present here today. Um, and I'm grateful because they are supporting a great cause. A cause. Uh, that I believe in as an individual. I'm not here to speak because uh, there was a project that we invested in. Uh, it's a dream that that dream is all about uh, identifying the right kind of spaces. And space for me is is not limited to how girls and certain um, people in our society move, but it's also uh, about how they think. I'll just start um, by explaining why I believe in this cause. 
and 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 that belief uh, i want to communicate through um, iqbal's poetry um, iqbal kehta hai ki jis ilm ki taaseer se zan hoti hai na zan jis ilm ki taaseer se zan hoti hai na zan kehte hain usi ilm ko arbab e nazar maut i'll translate uh, for people who are uh, not familiar with uh, urdu uh, it's 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 a complicated one but the, the myth that makes a woman lose her rank is not but death in the eyes of wise and frank and this is the identity which i believe as a, as a pakistani citizen as a person who believes in 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 islam um, this identity this space is what women equally deserves in our society uh, mostly what happens that we start by separating um, our daughters and son at a family level we are little reluctant to invest in the future of our daughters because they'll get married and we have to use our limited economies in a in a wise manner but as a pakistani citizen as as a father i have really seen a change happening in my family when my father invested in her daughter and and that's where this particular program of oxfam oran um which aim to empower and equip the selected group of 70 individuals by providing them with education and then also skills so that they can uh, grow and survive and gain that space in a society is is where our success lies and we are really happy that today we are present to support this particular agenda and we will we we really ensure that our support will continue and we'll continue to invest uh, in this cause so um, the time is short so i'll really cut my um, speech here and um, my last particular point around uh the project that we had uh, and i'll just conclude through a, uh, another uh, share and the share is ke uh, mostly what happens ke jab aapke paon pe able hote hain to aap usse ghabra jate hain theek hai lekin there are certain individuals with a, with the right kind of attitude jab unme wo able aate hain to wo raah ko purkhar dekhkar aur zyada khush hote hain kyunki jab मुश्किलात आती हैं वहीं से उनकी बेसिक ग्रोथ शुरू होती है सो वी वांट टू बेसिकली थ्रू दिस प्रोग्राम गोइंग फॉरवर्ड इन्वेस्ट एंड पास ऑन दिस काइंड ऑफ एटीट्यूड इन आर गर्ल्स सो दैट दे डोंट सी द चैलेंजेस इन द सोसाइटी द वे द सोसाइटीज फ्रेम देम एज अ लिमिटेशन टू देयर फ्यूचर बट इट्स इनफैक्ट अ काइंड ऑफ अ ड्राइव दैट शुड मोटिवेट देम गोइंग फॉरवर्ड थैंक यू सो मच thank you shanavas um, and we hope that uh, wherever oxfam is oxfam in pakistan or global they will continue to support girls education you can see the results and the dividends these are the dividends in covid not one day anybody stopped and i just want that to put on record we have about 60000 girls in our programs across pakistan not one day anything stopped and that i think goes to the resilience and the power of the teachers the parents and the caregivers and the girls themselves ek din inhone apni taaleem ko ek second ke liye kam nahi kiya aur ye sab hamare samne ye baithi hui hain aur lest we forget who they are hamare sath kausar hain razia hain minahil hain laiba hain hamare paas hamare sath saba hain और ये वो बच्चियां हैं जो कि अभी सिर्फ आई हैं और अगर आप इनकी लिस्ट देखें हजारों में हैं और व्हाट दे आर एबल टू डू दीज आर वॉइसेस दैट मैटर प्लीज हेयर दोज वॉइसेस एंड रेज दिस मिला हेल आई प्लेज फॉर जिया we today we are here for pledging i want to also welcome javed malik who's heading now the uh, fund javed is an old friend but also a friend for education and transformation and even bureaucratic transformation in pakistan because he's seen the insides of what happens what makes the system and the machinery tick and what we are pledging and requesting now is that we want that machinery to be all aligned as one and i think that's so important i do want to invite uh, dr sapchabnam sarfraz uh, who's sitting right in front 
and she is um, the senior member um, for social sectors and devolution in Pakistan at the Planning Commission. Um, Shabnam, would you like to come and say a few words? Uh, the, I, and we have been working in a steering committee together saying, what can we do? What can we do for out of school children? And I think, Shabnam, the idea is that we here together to form this alliance because if we're going to make these metrics stick, agar tabdili lani hai, agar hamare numbers ko farak hona hai, har saal hum PSLM mein ye nahi dekhna chahte, hum apni jo administrative data mein ye nahi dekhna chahte ke hum wahi ke wahi khade hai, hamari literacy bhi wahi hai, hamari uh, uh, economic uh, opportunity bhi wahi hai, aur hamari ladkiyon ki taadad aur aurton ki taadad employment mein bhi 25 feesad hai, ye nahi ho sakta, especially jab itne nafees log Pakistan mein itni amazing innovations kar rahe hain to is kamre mein bahut sare aur bhi log aa gaye jaise samar minilla aa gayi hain the filmmaker the activist hamare paas aur bhi saath saathi hain magar abhi main dr shabnam sarfraz ko daawat deti hu from the planning commission to be here and thank you so much for standing by our side what can we do let's be a member and part of the alliance Thank you so much. It's such a great honor being part of this uh, event. And uh, I think it's an esteemed panel that you've put together. On behalf of the Planning Commission, uh, we really appreciate uh, all that has been done so far. So just to share with you, I wouldn't take a lot of time, but just to share what the federal government is doing and what Planning Commission has been able to put forward. As COVID-19 happened, we took this as an opportunity for a more inclusive and equal Pakistan. We had made sure that we look at all our plans from a gender lens and have all our monitoring framework include some gender indicators so that there is some gender reporting happening at all levels. We have the Kamyab Jawan program and I serve as the focal point for that, the Prime Minister's flagship program under which we have both skills and entrepreneurship. We have specified targets for that and we are monitoring them. Like, for instance, for the entrepreneurship program, we have loans which are being given through the YES program and the quota which was fixed that the minimum of 25% of these loans should go towards the young entre female entrepreneurs. At the moment, it is at the last review that I took, it is at 8%, but we have asked them to submit measures that they will take in order to ensure that it is at 25% by the end of the first, next year and 50% by the conclusion of that. Uh, SR's program, Dr. Sanya Nishtar is here. I think that's again, one of the very promising programs to bring gender onto the policy table. Uh, for the first time, uh, we uh, have formulated a gender advisory committee, which is closely looking at the gender index. And this has been brought to the policy table and recently, uh, the Minister Planning Commission, Asad Umar, he had approved the formulation of a gender roadmap. And this is the first time, I think, in the history that we have been able to bring it to the highest policy table. And we are working aggressively with all partners in uh, taking this up. And I think a lot of interventions which have been piloted, they can become part of the key package of intervention that we are formulating, and they can be scaled up through that uh, roadmap. We, uh, as part of the roadmap, the three interventions that were picked up and we are working with the respective ministries was, uh, was related to the out of school children and the proportion of uh, girls within that. We've done a digitized survey over the last two weeks and we've completed that in ICT, AJK and GB, which is giving us information about the female enrollments, the dropouts during COVID-19, the transport access that they have available with them and we are waiting for the ministries to pre present their proposals to us uh, on transport as well as for evening schools where we can start those or weekend schools and also on the digital uh, inclusion so that is again in the pipeline uh, i think uh, with all this and all the efforts of these partners we do not re need to re actually reinvent the wheel and we are very open to taking up uh, suggestions and also I think there are many uh, platforms that we have created at the Planning Commission and we are working closely with the uh, with the development partners and acknowledge their I think decades long efforts and would want to use that evidence as we build up on our programs and policy initiatives and we do pledge 
to take this to a level that Pakistan has never witnessed before. And we are committed to do so. And you can count on us for that. Thank you so much. Thank you. So I keep saying that uh, there's a pledge form. We really want the pledges to be filled out and for us to be able to acknowledge. Now, I'm going to be, I'm, I'm actually being cheeky. That's why I'm doing that Dr. Sanya is sitting here. And when we had Sanya Nishtar in 2013 March, Sanya Nishtar was called to us, when Sanya Sahili was finished with one phase, then we had a lot of confidence that कि मैम आप हमारे लिए ये जो पोस्ट प्राइमरी का है तालीम का सिलसिला उसको चलाएं अब मुझे मालूम है और शायद इतना भी नहीं मालूम है कि कितनी तकोदो उनको करनी पड़ी टू स्टार्ट वसीला है तालीम तो इनफैक्ट द होल एजुकेशन कंपोनेंट एज अ लाइफ लॉन्ग लर्निंग कंपोनेंट क्योंकि हमें मालूम है कि अगर शुरू से नहीं शुरू होता तो ये आगे जाके इसमें बहुत अटका होते तो मैं मैम सानिया को दो दफा सहमत दूंगी so once I would really want her to share the effort of Girls Education and Enterprise Alliance as it has been iterated and crafted within SAS, because this is an amazing story. It goes to millions of beneficiaries. The question is how? Or because here our children are also there. हमारी बहुत सारी तंजीमें यहाँ पे मौजूद हैं जैसे डेफ रीच है और हमारी इंक्लूसिव एजुकेशन मुनजा गिलानी मालूम नहीं कहाँ पर हैं बट साइट सेवर्स हैं बहुत सारे ऐसे लोग हैं फ्रॉम एन इंक्लूसिव पर्सपेक्टिव एंड बी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट बॉटम ऑफ द पिरामिड तो मैं चाहूंगी एक दफा सानिया निश्चर अपने प्रोग्राम्स के बारे में हमें आगाह करें बिकॉज दैट आई थिंक फ्रेम्स दिस होल कॉन्वर्सेशन एंड देन विल कॉल हर फॉर हर प्लेज राइट एट द एंड as the person who's the chief guest here. Ji, Sanya Nishtar. Asalaamu Alaikum and uh, good afternoon, Your Excellency. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, friends, I see a lot of friends in the room. It's, uh, it's both a pleasure and a privilege to be here. I want to acknowledge the role that our friend Bela has been playing over the years to promote uh, girls' education, uh, and, and, and I have enormous respect for the work that she does. So uh, I'm not going to talk about the, about the situation, because I think that in the morning situations, you must have gone over that in detail. Bela summarized it as well, and then uh, Christian uh, talked about about the uh, potential for impact. You know, the evidence is very overwhelming. Uh, if you invest in girls' education, you immediately improve social and economic outcomes. And there is just no two questions about that. So I, I won't repeat what he's already said, but just to echo that I completely agree with him. Let me tell you a little bit about SAS and the scale of SAS and the strong embedding of the gender component within SAS. So SAS, as you, as you all may be aware, is a multi-component initiative targeting different vulnerable groups. We have overall 19 large programs targeting 14 vulnerable groups. And to support those 19 large programs, there are over 292 supporting initiatives and we track this entire execution paradigm through uh, through a delivery framework um, we're delivering things at uh, at a very accelerated pace um, and in terms of the gender component the first conscious decision that we took was that we will refer not to women but to women and girls so in the SAS framework wherever you see a reference a gender related reference or a programmatic reference, uh, it will always say women and girls that that is a conscious decision we've taken. Secondly, uh, right at the very inception after the SAS program was formally announced and, uh, and, and put into the execution pipeline, the first policy that we came out with, which we, exe which we execute uh, very, very religiously is the governance and integrity policy. There's an observatory which gauges 
the execution of different implementing agencies, the various components of the governance and integrity policy. And the second policy that we officially approved is called the 50% plus policy, which means that anything, any program that accrues benefit to the population through SRS has to have a minimum of 50%, uh, has to accrue 50% of the benefits to women. That is how we started. But as we stand today, more than 70% of the benefits in the SAS program accrue to women. So that is a stated policy and there's a mechanism of, of tracking that. The third thing that we did under the SAS rubric is to, uh, is to mandate uh, accountability for delivery on metrics. So I'll give you some examples. Every time I convene a steering committee meeting of SAS undergraduate scholarships, this which is one of the 19 programs, um, I'm invariably told it is very difficult to meet the 50% metric. Uh, and every time there is a proposal at the steering committee to bring it down to 30%, but we are staying on course. The programs is meant, the scholarship program is meant to accrue 50% of the benefits to girls. And currently it stands at 48%. On the other, th the, the, the other gender specific intervention that we did uh, was to uh, take a decision that the stipends that we give both in our health and nutrition conditional cash transfer and the education conditional cash transfer, which Bela referred to, which has a history, and I will alert to the, allude to that in a moment, that the stipend amount is going to be weighted in favor of a girl child. So across the initiative, whether it's at primary level or the secondary or higher secondary level, boys get a lower stipend than the girl child. So at the primary level, girls, for a boy, the, the family will get 1,500. For the girl, they will get 2,000. For the, at the secondary level, for the boy, they will get 2,500. For the girl, they will get 3,000. And at the high secondary level, for the girl, boy, they will get 3,500. And for the girls, they will get uh, 4,000. Now, the true impact of this intervention uh, of this very deliberate weighting of the stipend in favor of the girl child, the true impact of this will probably cascade into metrics uh, over a decade. But I can tell you from anecdotal sites in the field, it is truly having a transformative effect. I come from what was called the Northwest frontier. I worked in a hospital as a medical student, as, as a medical officer, where I had to ask a mother twice how many children she has. She would, when I would ask her first, when I was taking the medical history, she would say, I have four children. And then I'd say, no, but how many, how many girls do you have? Say, oh, but I have four girls also. The woman had a total of eight children. She would never report a girl in the first instance when, I, when we would inquire. And subsequently, they would say. And in that environment, when you signal that the government will reward you, for having a girl and for celebrating the girl and for investing in her education and for investing in her nutrition and health it is truly transformative and i've seen in our centers women come with 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 girls uh, you know and proudly taking the stipends uh, and, which is a very little token that the, that the government can do for them the scale of these initiatives is massive the education conditional cash transfer being run under srs today is applicable uh, is deployed in every district, in every tehsil, in every union council of the country. For this year, our target is 5 million children. 5 million children, 50% uh, of that strictly girls. Are, so the, the initiative uh, that Bela referred to uh, and where I'm talking about a metric of 5 million has a history because in 2012, uh, the, the, what was the then DFID, invested in an education conditional cash transfer program called Vasila Talim, which was executed out of BISP. It ran initially in five districts, was subsequently expanded. And when I took over three years ago, I commissioned a meta-analysis of Vasila Talim because it was a, the concept was great. Uh, the program had iterated over the years. By the time I took over, it was operational in 50 districts. But there were some glaring gaps. So I issued, so I commissioned a meta-analysis. Uh, and based on the findings of the meta-analysis, we made some evidence-based changes. And some of those evidence-based changes related to the 
infrastructure of execution. For instance, there was a reliance on NGOs and we built our in-house capacity, which required an extensive amount of three, three spanning three years. So we had to hire over a thousand individuals on merit. We had to man our uh, offices. We had to invest in the, the technologies at the digital back end. We had to uh, buy a thousand motorbikes. So that work has, so the spade work, the infrastructure investment was massive. And that was to not rely on, on piecemeal support, but to develop the infrastructure. We then, uh, budgeted for a countrywide execution, which we now have. So the so the SAS school stipends, uh, taking a life course approach, are 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 uh, are deployed in every union council of the country. We then took a decision to, uh, as I've already mentioned, to get the stipends weighted in favor of the girl child, and that has hit the ground very positively. And the subsequent decision that we took uh, was to give a graduation bonus to girls when they do the fifth grade. Um, and of course, we increased the size of the stipend amount. Now, th the program as it stands today has a massive scale, but, the, but this comes with a number of challenges as well. The first challenge is the challenge of awareness. Uh, as, as a government, we sometimes tend to think that once we've cascaded something into policy, deployed it, and got the awareness uh, materials out, that job is done, that is not the case. That is where execution begins. So after three years of extensive spade work and setting up the systems and complex policy approvals and deployment, and not talk to, talk, to talk about the digital back end, for me, the work has just begun. Because if we are not going to reach the last mile with the information that the service is available, we would not have done our job properly. Um, the second is the digital literacy, because SAS is 100% is, is digitally turned around. So to get individuals to, uh, to, to take advantage of it demands a certain level of uh, basic literacy on which we are now investing. So I don't want to, you to think that we have aligned the sun, moon, and the stars, but I can confidently let you know that there is a very serious intent uh, to cascade policy into implementation, because a lot of times governments have this tendency to, 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 to say things that touch the moon, but in deployment, uh, you're basically not even at the ground level. So we, we took a very, uh, a very courageous decision to, uh, to favor girls in, in education and health and nutrition benefits. We cascaded it into policy. We set up the execution arrangements. These things are now rolling. And as I said, our challenge is awareness creation and uh, digital and financial literacy, which brings me to the question of uh, the potential of partnerships. I know that there are a lot of actors on ground, civil society actors that work in education. And um, we would really like to explore partnerships with, with them. And I will have my technical colleagues speak to you to see how we can further those relationship. I recall meeting, uh, you know, I think yesterday or the day before was the day of the girl child. So there, there was a delegation of mothers and girls visiting me. Um, and I asked the woman sitting next to me, how many children do you have? And she said, I have 10 children. I've got four boys and six girls. Her her, uh, her, um, her youngest girl had come to call on me and she was like a, I think a five-year-old, a very emaciated five-year-old in uniform. Uh, and I asked her, I said, what about the other girls? And she said, the other girls are, are too old to be enrolled in our program. And I was trying to, I was trying to counsel her that now the government is trying to give you stipends to overcome the financial access barrier because we are not responsible for supply side. It's the provinces that are responsible for supply side. We have a small role. And the small limited role is just to overcome the financial access barrier. And it was so touching for me to hear that woman say that I was not able to send my kids because there's a little bit of expense involved. And I wasn't able to afford that. But if had, had this stipend been available before, I would have educated the other girls as well. 
now that the programs are set up, I don't want us to miss the opportunity of having other girls educated because we failed them in terms of creating the awareness. That's why we, that's where we look to you. Thank you very much for having me here. And uh, it's all of you for your pledge, so you have to. Absolutely. Uh, so, uh, this is very conditional cash transfers are और वो किस तरह से वो हम किस तरह से उनकी रसाई हो सकती है ये हमारी जो बच्चियां आई भी हैं और डॉक्टर सानिया आपसे पहले जब ये बात कर रही थी दे हैव ऑल कम फ्रॉम एग्जैक्टली दैट सिचुएशन ऑफ द मदर विद द 10 चिल्ड्रन दे वर सपोर्टेड थ्रू वेरियस इनिशिएटिव्स दैट वी वर टेकिंग सो दैट इनकी तालीम भी चलती इनको स्किल्स भी मिलती or ab ye enterprise mein ho ke they are now becoming livelihood partners we have girls from grade 7 girls from grade 11 and also girls who have finished the metric and now into coding and learning thank you um, his, his excellency dr christian turner for being here and lending his great support we would love to see the uk government continue as we've heard the prime minister always root for girls education from uk thank you and we will take your pledge card sabha can you take your pledge card from dr rana <laughs> thank you so uh ye bahut zaruri hai ki hame ye jo programs government ke itne large scale ke hain is tak rasai kaise hogi aur jo jo log yahan baithe hain chahe ncrc se log hain defreet se hain save the children se hain civil society hain hamari uh, activists say summer minla hai sab log how do we get to this information that is i think the most important part i would like to move on and at this stage we i would like to invite the you know abo you know unicef ko ye kehte hue ke it's a development partner or multinational partner hame samajh nahi aati because unicef is so embedded in pakistan that um unicef knows us some better than ourselves but um People like Ida and her amazing team go where no one goes and they go there first. But Ida, we want to hear how we can collaborate as we asking Dr. Sanya Nishtar when she leaves with a pledge, how can ITA and other partners who are here, what can we do to accelerate the access to these amazing uh, instruments that SAS has come up with, which will actually bring Fuel all the fuel to the Girls Education and Enterprise Alliance, the acceleration. Ye ilmo fun ka kafla. Ida kaise chalayengi? Ida, over to you. Thank you so much, uh, Bella. Um, Your Excellency, I think he's still there. Uh, Dr. Sanya Nishta, uh, distinguished guests. Uh, partners, colleagues. It is great to be back. Only about a year ago we were together. I think that was the last uh, in-person big event that we had. So it's great to come back again, but this time with some hope also because the government of Pakistan and partners have worked really, really hard to, uh, to respond to the pandemic. And here, uh, Dr. Sania really to commend the government and, and uh, particularly SS also in really the way you have responded. We've been very, um, uh, you know, we, we really value also the partnership. We're very proud as UNICEF, as UN, um, on, uh, on how we have worked together. And to date, I think we, it's so great to see this week uh, all children back in school. Uh, and that would not have happened had it not been for the successful uh, rollout of the vaccinations and the enforcement of the S SOPs. Uh, so it's really hopefully uh, the beginning of a normalization that, so that we can get back uh, to school. Uh, I, I won't go back through all the statistics, but I think it has already been said this is a wonderful opportunity uh, uh, for us to renew our partnerships. Uh, we know that some progress has been made in terms of increasing primary school, uh, primary education, primary school enrollment rates, uh, but we still know that there are challenges. For every 100 boys enrolled in primary school, there are only about 87 girls. Uh, and as we have seen, when we 
lo look at transition to middle school to uh, to secondary school there's that despite the gap even widens um, and, and we've heard i think from previous speakers about the uh, 22 million children plus who are still out of school most of whom are girls many of those children have never even been to school um, so, so it is still a, a really daunting challenges that that remain, um, and and girls uh, are not even those who are in school are not developing basic foundational uh, skills, uh, literacies, numeracy, uh, the transferable skills, the critical thinking, the digital learning. Uh, it's still a huge gap, gender gap there. Uh, so we really need to to think out of the box to 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 cut and to really join hands and to have concerted efforts to uh, to, to really move towards a transformative agenda to think at scale. Uh, one of the things that um, ILO estimates says that there are three million young people who enter the job market every year in Pakistan. Uh, but only, um, but when we look at actually what percentage of uh, young people uh, are in education employment or training, it's only 31% of young people are not in education, employment, or in any form of training, according to ILO. And, and looking at girls, that rate actually is even very few girls, very few young women have actually access to training employment. So really, uh, we are not preparing young people to enter the job market. There's so much to do. And of course, COVID has also exacerbated the situation. More children are, are, are dropping out. The learning loss has been tremendous and it's going to take a lot of efforts to get back uh, on track. Uh, but COVID has also, with a silver lining, is that it has made, for instance, digital uh, learning now a priority uh, of, of everyone. So there is commitment now to really accelerate on digital learning. And, and we're very pleased to, to see some of the work that government is doing to, to, to model uh, it's, it's, it's some innovative approaches to accelerating digital learning uh, for young people. Uh, for us, UNICEF, Bella, I think just like to thank you, uh, to thank Dr. Sanya, Dr. Shabnaz, and all others. In the last few weeks, we've been really bringing partners together to see what is it that UNICEF should focus on uh, in the next five years, because we are developing our country program of cooperation. And you have all uh, given us really a, a, a lot to think about. You have challenged us to think out of the box, to look at the, uh, our own comparative advantage so that we can actually uh, work with you to look at uh, scalable, innovative solutions. And one of them is, is really how do we build on our existing uh, accelerated learning program for out of school children, but how do we build on that to link it to skills development? So today's initiative, this launch, it's very really uh, is exactly the sort of thing that we hope to do under the global framework called Generation Unlimited here in Pakistan, uh, together with Bella and others, we've been thinking about how do you really adapt to that to the Pakistan context. Uh, we are currently modeling it in Punjab together with the Punjab Skills Development Fund, um, uh, ITA, uh, the government, then uh, NAFTEC, so that we see that linkage between the accelerated learning program, the out of school skills training. And here we're talking about transferable skills, the, the, the uh, life, um, life skills, but also uh, skills for livelihood and linking them also to businesses so that these young people have access to apprenticeship, job shadowing and so forth. Uh, and, and it has to have a very strong, uh, focus on girls. And so we're really hoping to see the, that proof of concept so that it can be used 
uh, to scale up. But last but not least, just to say again, to renew our partnership, uh, we definitely will pledge partnership because I don't think any one uh, organization alone can handle, can, can really tackle this. So we all need to be together and really to commend you again, uh, Bella, for your leadership. Thank you. Thank you, Ida, always there as a partner. Um, we will be going um, into partnerships that are going to be stronger and more vibrant as we come along. Um, can we just have another uh, a, a chair here, please? Thank you. We'll just... No, 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 We'll just make some squeeze. Don't worry. <laughs> so uh, this is going to be important. Or Ida ne jaise kaha ke ye humne uh, aap agar pledge forms bhi agar padhe, main baad mein ek minute mein padungi. To usme education, life skills ko makatha isliye rakha hai. Or edtech ko bhi kyunki ye ye sab cheeze milti hai, to transformation hoti hai. Hamari jo third party evaluation opera ne ki UK se. तो उसमें यह कहा कि जो लड़कियों ने एकेडेमिकली आगे बढ़ी तो वो इसलिए बढ़ी क्योंकि जिसको कहते हैं नॉन कॉग्निटिव लाइफ स्किल्स वो उसकी वजह से आगे बढ़ी तो दे बिकेम अ ट्रिगर फॉर दैट इमोशनल लेवल ऑफ रिकंसिलिएशन एंड रिजिलियंस टू बी एबल टू बी मोर कमिटेड टू द एकेडेमिक क्लोजर आई एम सो ग्रेटफुल दैट वी हैव विद अस uh vaseem ajmal sahab the joint education advisor of the ministry of for federal education and professional training with us a very old partner um I, we've learned together in many many spaces from districts to here uh, as there are many others over here but vaseem sahab thank you for joining we have akiko with us from the ministry to say just a few words on some uh, of the initiatives and what is there that we can do because the first pillar of the national education policy framework 2018 was out of school children ye pehla pillar tha uske baad humne equalizing ki aur single national curriculum ki baat ki fir quality ki ki but i think it would be great to see what are the initiatives and if we can be short um, as we move towards the end of the program but we need to see pledges what can we do people here all around to get this platform and alliance off to millions of girls, they don't have to wait. They don't want to have to wait. Look, these people who are here, there's only one group which is there working for five years. Others have been working from six months to 18 months and showing what can be achieved. So, Akiko, <laughs> I'm going to ask Vaseem Sahib later. I'm not going to let him go without anything. I would like uh, you to say a few words and we move on. And uh, the next person who to speak will be Father Sen. Thank you very much. And uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Akiko Hanaya from JICA, uh, Education Policy Advisor, and I'm assigned to the Ministry, uh, Federal Ministry. I'm sorry, I didn't prepare the speech because I didn't know about the. Yes, yeah, I came to know about this event just yesterday. Uh, my colleague in the ministry, Aisha, Dr. Aisha, told me about this event, and I immediately decided to join that. And this is my first face-to-face -face event since I came here this time. And I'm very happy that this is the event I joined in person. And uh, of course, I pledge for girls' education, as well as the government of Japan, we commit to girls' education, and we, we, we keep exploring the way uh, to contribute to girls' education in Pakistan. Thank you very much. He's been the ambassador for ASAP and data driven uh, evidence that leads to action. So, thank you very much. Give us a call. Thank now. you, Bismillah Ramani Uh, Dr. Sanya Nishtar, uh, Bela Jamil Saba, 
distinguished guests. I'm very grateful, as as Bela said, I've been associated with uh, uh, with Asar for a, a, a more more than a decade now, and it's always been a pleasure to to see how wonderfully well this organization is doing. Um, sadly, uh, you know, I can't say the same for the for the data that we get from from these surveys because unfortunately the kind of improvement that we should be seeing in in data for education for children is has not been as encouraging as it should have been i remember uh, in 2010 uh, when i when we looked for looked ahead another decade i thought we would be in a much better position than we are today and one of the reasons for that is that unfortunately education especially for girls but also for boys remains uh, not a priority for any government regardless in 2010, there was a different government we've gone through at least. Uh, this this is probably the third government since then. Um, and I'm, I, I'm sorry to say that, uh, you know, there has been no substantive difference in terms of their attitude towards education, despite the, the, the tall claims of, uh, you know, uh, spending extra money, uh, sending all children to school, uh, declaring an education emergency. The figures and uh, of of uh, especially about for for girls that we are uh, seeing in terms you know in terms of out of school children uh, are abysmally low. Uh, and as Pakistanis, I think we should all be very ashamed of the fact that today uh, these are the figures that that we have. And unfortunately, these figures are going to get even worse uh, once the next data comes in because of the impact of. COVID. In terms of the media, I believe uh, just two points and then I'm going to say thank you. Uh, one of the one is the fact that education, uh, both for girls and for, both for boys and girls, especially for girls, has never made it to the kind of uh, political agenda that it should have. And there are a number of reasons, reasons for that. I know uh, my friend Musharraf Zaidi has worked on this very admirably uh, in the last couple of years to try and integrate uh, education as part of a core agenda for political parties. Uh, we were hopeful at, at one point it has not happened as yet. Uh, the next elections are due. Um, we don't know whether they're going to be early elections. Even if they're not, uh, they're only another two years to go. Do I see education being flagged as something that is going to figure very highly in the next elections? The answer, unfortunately, is no. Which is where a number of stakeholders come in, including the one that I represent, which is the media. Uh, and there are a number of reasons why media in itself has not played the kind of role it should have. One of the reasons is that media has not been able to reflect voices from the grassroots level. Uh, it is still a very urban centric, uh, main city centric institution. It has not been able to filter down to the grassroots level and produce or amplify or magnify the voices, the demands, the requirements that are often heard at the at the local level. So that is a big failure of the media. Uh, however, having acknowledged that, I think uh, it is time, there is, there is another opportunity coming up in terms of centralizing the agenda of education into our mainstream politics with elections coming up. I hope that the media and everybody else can play a role. I, I absolutely, whatever I can do, I, you know, I've always been with Bela and the organization and I'm always going to be there. Thank you very much. UNESCO, as I said, is the guardian for SDG 4. We have uh, Alina Bibi with us um, uh, from um, UNESCO and just a statement to hear what UNESCO Pakistan will be doing for the Girls Education and Enterprise Alliance Ilmo Fun Ka Kafla. And I hope we'll be able to see how many doors will open through such partnerships such as UNESCO. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Honorable Dr. Uh, Sanya Nishtar Sahiba, Dr. Shapnam, um, Masih Majmal Saab, Mr. Afzadi Saab, Nazia, um, Akiko, and um, Fawad Hussain, Ms. Bella Jamil, all the dignitaries, guests, students, and everyone. Assalamu alaikum and very warm good afternoon. Um, today we are uh, talking about why girls' education and enterprise matters. Um, there uh, earlier um, uh, presenter talked about, but is because it's today of the girls' education. So I will I, I will reiterate I will echo some of the statistics. What um, 
the, uh, the High Commissioner just mentioned, that there is a positive correlation between women, women empowerment and an improvement in the society. And uh, he talked about that there is, uh, when there is a woman, educated woman in the society, there is a lower mortality rate, low, lower for mother, mo mother's maternity rate. But I will add one thing which uh, we, was very evident during COVID because um, the woman leadership, if in the organization we are there, have women leaders, they have more progress and accountability, and which was evident during the COVID as well because. Some of the countries with women leadership were able to combat COVID quickly than compared to the men. So don't be offend my men colleagues, but it was something become evident during the COVID. So, so yeah. And of course, uh, to bring women empowerment or to bring women into the uh, society, we need education. Without education, we cannot do. And there is also evident and believe as well that educa education and especially investing on girls education is the most effective way to deal with poverty global poverty and extremism so there is no second opinion that girls education and enterprise matters but why we haven't been able to do this so far what can why we haven't what can be done and what can we do and i will not be pessimistic that uh, we have number of uh, so many number of out of school children. Um, and there is we have low highest dropout rate, low transition rate. All these factors and figures are there, but we need to be very optimistic what we can do as a as a group. So I have two messages for the audience and for all the development partners we have. The first thing is we need to coordinate. We need to supplement and complement each other. We need to be competitive, but at the same same time we need to be supportive of each other. Uh, a lot of th things are going on for education, and there is also an, an, a statistic that 40% of the aid coming from, from the foreign world goes to education. Still, we haven't been able to achieve what we aim to achieve. So this is the time we have to reflect. We, haven't, we have to uh, reflect and move forward and coordinate with each other. And secondly, um, as Bella Saib also mentioned, girls need education, but just giving them girls, just giving girls a primary education, a secondary education doesn't work. They need skills and they need opportunities to utilize their capabilities and capacities. Our youth has numerous talent. We need to tape on that. We need to provide a, a girls access to all the opportunities, all where they could develop their capacities and capabilities. We need to ensure their access to high quality, quality higher education, non-technical vocational and technical education, market-oriented skills, and access to technology. I consider that the current government initiatives as one of the steps toward achieving gender equity in Pakistan. We need such more programs, and we need sustainable programs. There should not be one project. And I'm very happy to learn about what Dr. Nash, uh, Sanya Nishtar said and what Dr. Shapnam said. They have they are using gender lens in all our programs. So we need gender lens in our programs and projects. And um, when we invest on girls, it has more return. And the research also says that there is a low dropout in secondary level. When we are able to help girls from prime from move from primary to secondary level, there is a low dropout rate. So we need to work on, on this gap. We need to uh, work on the girls' lower secondary and higher secondary education. Coming from UNESCO. So what we as a UNESCO do for girls' education, as Bella Saiba said, we are the custodian of education. Um, we are doing a lot of work um, here and there, but in Pakistan, I'm, I'm proud to say that we are working in most remote and isolated districts of Pakistan, and we are working for mainstreaming girls into education. And um, how we do it, we are trying to work both on demand and supply side of education. Because I believe if we will not create demand, we will won't be able to achieve the gender equity. If parents are not aware, if parents are not willing, as uh, Dr. Sanya just mentioned that mothers is not ready, not ready to consider a girl as a child, how can we ask them to send their child, uh, child, girls to school? So we need to create a demand. We can provide supply, but if there is no demand, we cannot, uh, achieve the girls' education. So at UNESCO, we try to work both de demand and supply side of education. We work with the communities, we work the political leaders, influential people, 
and all of them, which has helped us to create a demand for girls' education. And to improve the quality aspect of uh, the education, we try to work with the teachers and the school management committee so that we could, de could develop a learning supporting environment in school and we can improve the quality of education. And above of all, all of that, we work the state functionaries, which has helped us to create the ownership of the program because without government support, we cannot be able to achieve our mandate. Because we believe that it's not important just to bring girls to school, but it is important that girls stay there and learn some skills. I will not take much because um, already has so many things has been done, but I'm glad to share with you uh, as well that uh, we, we started at UNESCO, we started with the primary education, but now we have been able to move to the second, lower secondary education, as I mentioned, that research says if we work on lower secondary education, there will be more, uh, there will be no dropout and there will be more uh, economic progress. So we are trying to work with uh, in the lower secondary education as well. And we hope to continue this support to work for girls education and to benefit the uh, girls who are living in most remote and isolated part of the countries where they don't have access to school. And uh, but last and but not least, girls education matter because coming from a, a, being a woman and coming from a very, very small village and a very remote district of KPK, Chitral, and talking about girls' education with all these dignitaries, I believe, and I confirm that girls' education matters. So thank you so much.